bet you ten thousand dollars he laughs his ass off. I don't give a damn if he does. Marvin, what do you make of all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that? Oh, what the fuck's happening? Oh, oh, man. 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 Why the fuck? When Resident Evil 2 was revealed to be an over-the-shoulder reimagining, most people were thrilled with what they saw. It was only those blinded by nostalgia and unable to accept new things who had reservations about it. People like me. But there's no sense in arguing about it now. Capcom isn't making fixed camera games again, and this is the Resident Evil 2 that we have. And after giving the game a fair chance, I feel like the results are a mix, but one that's mostly positive. In many ways, this is the best case scenario for an over-the-shoulder Resident Evil 2, but in a few ways it fell below my expectations to the point that I'd say it's the worst case. The first thing that struck me about the game is how much it feels like a reversion to Resident Evil 4. The combat in that game was based on split-second decisions and pinpoint shooting done while standing in place, and every shot really mattered. As the series went on, Capcom lost what made those controls appealing. It felt like your BB gun was firing right through the zombies in Resident Evil 6. But here, shooting matters again, with limbs flying off and headshots buying windows of time to run past. You have the ability to move and shoot at the same time, but it's well balanced by the fact that you're much more likely to miss. Zombies squirm around in a way that makes them hard enough to target while standing in place, and unlike the original Resident Evil 2, you'll need to save every bullet you can to get by. I found myself running low on ammo constantly on my first run, but never to the point where I was completely unarmed. I finished the first Birkin battle with the very last shot in my handgun, and I'm not sure if that was the game's adaptive difficulty or if I was just incredibly lucky. Either way, the balancing is extremely well done and this is the kind of intensity I was hoping for in a remake. They've also succeeded in making a game that's genuinely scary. The zombies are the star of the show and they've never been this grotesque. They manage to be threatening with how unpredictable their movements are and they're built like tanks that can take headshot after headshot without going down. Getting caught between a few of them at once leads to getting eaten instead of roundhouse kick combos. A lot of people wondered if Capcom would add Crimson Heads into the game, but the zombies fill that role on their own by being so erratic that you can never tell when they'll spring back to life. The Licker is another enemy I was concerned about, since the over-the-shoulder view took away what made them threatening when they appeared in Resident Evil 5. That game sent them in swarms to compensate. I've always thought the only other option for over-the-shoulder was to redesign them to be much more aggressive, and that's exactly what they've done here. They move extremely fast and absorb shotgun blasts without even flinching. I could never find a reliable way to fight them, so sneaking by became the only good option, and they were always a major threat when they appeared. I was surprised to see that even the dogs were made into something nightmarish and worthy of having their own stretch of the game devoted to them. Unfortunately, I started to like the enemies less and less beyond this point. Mr. X has been reimagined as a stalker character and is really intimidating for a few minutes. And then he just becomes a pain in the ass. It seems like there's some alien isolation type rubber banding going on, where one moment he's on the first floor and the next on the third. And a few times I caught what seemed to be his footsteps suddenly glitching in while opening a door as if he was teleporting around according to the rooms I was in. It's a waste of resources to fight him as he revives and resumes chasing you by the time that you've reached the very next room. So my go-to way of dealing with him was to lure him away so I could buy a few moments with whatever puzzle I was solving. That's all that he really was, a gigantic interruption, and they overdid it to the point that I'd say he ruins the game when he appears. I'd been anticipating a scene between Leon and Marvin, and when it finally happened I couldn't focus on their characters because this asshole was clomping around right behind me. Seriously, fuck this guy. The alligator was cut from the game until Capcom found a way to put him in, and while I don't want to spoil it for those who haven't played yet, it's a very, very Resident Evil 6, and I do mean that in a bad way, the only way one can mean it. I expected Birkin to be a better enemy in Over the Shoulder, and in pretty much every way he is. Eyeball weak points are as generic as it gets, but they were built into his old design and it was inevitable that we'd be shooting them, and they do make good use of the Over the Shoulder aiming. You can really get a sense that he's in pain and losing control of himself in the fights, and his visual overhaul is one of the best things about the game. As expected, most areas have been expanded, but the streets are actually trimmed down. It takes under a minute to get to the RPD, and while there's a little more street content halfway through the game, I don't understand the point of moving it there. The streets set the tone for the original game and made it clear how hopeless and dangerous the city was before entering the RPD. 
The lone gas station at the start of the remake doesn't really convey the same thing. This seemed like a natural place to add content, but I guess we'll have to wait until Resident Evil 3 to get our fix of Raccoon City. The RPD layout is mostly intact with some extra rooms and a third floor added on. I got a little worried when this moment happened. Leon, it's Marvin. I need you back here ASAP. Because it reminded me of the way the other M jerked players around the map. Proceed through the hatch I just unlocked. Luckily, that's the only instance of it, and you're totally free to explore on your own. I got lost at one point and had to recheck files in order to find that I overlooked some important clue, which is a lot more satisfying than following some objective marker. I thought that Resident Evil 7 was a half step towards the older games where the exploration was more linear with less backtracking, but here Capcom has really nailed the feeling of exploring the RPD. Everything after the RPD has basically been redone from scratch without using the old layouts. Ada's new sewer section has her hacking into control panels to make her way forward. Bear in mind that this takes place in 1998, and this is what hacking looked like in the 90s. Log in and all the way file. It's the Gibson, it's finding us too fast. It starts off as an awkward mechanic and becomes really tedious when Mr. X is thrown in to stalk you while you hack the consoles. There's even a boss type confrontation you have to hack your way out of. This whole segment can fuck itself, and if I haven't said it already, this guy can get double fucked. On the other side of things, Sherry's new segment is excellent, and it really pushes how disturbed Chief Irons is. There's a little bit of Resident Evil 7 type stealth, but it's really well done and doesn't go on any longer than it needs to. This is a huge upgrade from the original box pushing puzzle. The game seemed like it brought back the original zapping system with A and B scenarios for each character, but I was surprised and disappointed by how lazily it was handled. In the original, actions like taking a certain weapon or unlocking a door would have consequences in the other character's scenario, and the stories matched up very well. No actions carry over between campaigns now, and sections where Leon and Claire would have crossed paths in the original now just have a note from the other character being left behind. To my surprise, certain scenes get directly repeated. You might see a certain character die, and then dust themselves off to die the exact same way again 20 minutes later in the second run. The old B scenario ending was an even more dramatic finale that felt like the true ending of the game, but here it just feels like a tacked on thing they shouldn't have even bothered with. My biggest problem with the game is its atmosphere. Yes, the game looks amazing on a technical level. Capcom is really pushing what their engine can do to impress you with lighting effects and photorealism, and it's... kind of boring. The original Resident Evil 2 didn't really have the hardware to generate the kind of mood they wanted, so they had to use a lot of workarounds like fixed cameras and pre-rendered backdrops. Limitations like that aren't necessarily a bad thing. Jaws was supposed to have a shark in it, but when the robot broke down and they filmed without it, the result was something much more sinister. He's gone under. He's gone under the boat. I think he's gone under the boat. Resident Evil 2's atmosphere was created by dramatic angles, great art direction, and a really powerful soundtrack, and that's why it's held up so well in spite of looking so pixelated and blocky. The things the atmosphere was based on don't really age, and it's that atmosphere that's kept me coming back to the game all these years. I was worried that an over-the-shoulder game would lose some of the charm of the environments and that the soundtrack would end up being diminished to ambient noise like the other over-the-shoulder games. Boy, do I hate being right some of the time. Using a flashlight in a dark hallway is a cheap way to generate horror that gets tiresome pretty quickly. I was bored of flashlight segments on the first floor of the RPD and the game just keeps throwing them at you up until the very end. I loved everything I saw that wasn't a dark hallway, but that only leaves about half of the game. You could argue that the first remake also darkened things compared to the original, but that wasn't lit by a wobbly flashlight. Resident Evil 2 takes place in urban and industrial settings, and it always struck me as leaning more towards James Cameron than George Romero. This is nitpicking, but I'd have liked to see a little more of that visual influence in the remake. 
The soundtrack is a much bigger problem. There was some confusion over it when the first samples came online. Some people argued that the watered-down themes were probably just placeholders and that the score wasn't finished yet. It's actually much worse than that. Those are the themes and they only last a few seconds and then never play again. Not even Resident Evil 4 took save room music away from you. And those little ringtone length remixes are about as much of the old Resident Evil 2 as you're going to hear. Like I mentioned in the last video, the over-the-shoulder games seem focused on spatial awareness, and this game takes it to another level with binaural audio. The 3D audio is great, but I see no reason why the game had to ditch its soundtrack completely to accommodate it. If there was one moment to crank the music back up, it would be the Birkin fights. He had a great theme in the original game, which they've passed up here in favor of much more generic music. In case you disagree, then I have a question for you. I can remember the music to every room in the game 21 years later, and it's not just nostalgia. A lot of these themes were etched into my brain the very first time I played. Will you remember the library theme from this game in 21 years? Do you even remember it now, right after playing? Let me refresh your memory. No wait, that's the basement theme, hold on. Oops, I think that one's the lab. Wait, here it is. Wait a sec. I don't even think it has a theme. The moment I was most worried about was this one. It was so dependent on the score and the dramatic angles that I wasn't sure how Capcom would handle it in Over the Shoulder. So you can imagine my relief when it turned out not to even be in the game at all. According to the original soundtrack option, this generic utility room is the equivalent moment in the remake. The soundtrack was such a disappointment that it left me wondering if there was some kind of legal issue preventing them from using the original songs, but then we wouldn't have the soundtrack swap. One of the best scores in gaming history was thrown in the trash for no real reason, and I find it hard to imagine a lamer outcome than this. Okay, well, it still sucks. The original soundtrack fits pretty well in some areas, but not so well in others. The first remake recreated the same songs to fit in with the new tone of the game, and that's what needed to happen here. Although if those few remixes that are in the game are any indication, a good soundtrack was never in the cards for this remake. Resident Evil 2 probably isn't the remake that a lot of people were imagining over the past two decades. I was never concerned that it would be a bad game, and I didn't even really doubt that Capcom would find some way to make it scary. I was worried that it wouldn't be scary or good in the way that the original was. I'd say that this game only captures half of what I valued about the original game. It doesn't have shit on the first remake in terms of fully capturing an experience and elevating it. The original Resident Evil 2 isn't remotely close to being obsolete as a result of this remake. But the remake does manage to find a lot of new appeal in its own way and it captures enough of the original spirit to still feel like Resident Evil 2. Aside from the mediocre zapping system, Capcom clearly gave this their all, and I think they pulled off the game that they wanted to. Whether it's the game you wanted is for you to judge. But I think almost anyone would agree that this is easily the best game in the series since Resident Evil 4, and anyone who likes the over-the-shoulder games even a little bit shouldn't hesitate to play it. For fixed camera fans who don't like the over-the-shoulder games, You'll probably find a lot of things to hate here, and you may be better off just forgetting the whole series. I'd give it 8 out of 10, and I think that's a little generous. It's good as a new game, but very inconsistent as a remake. And I'm actually disappointed that Capcom didn't prove me totally wrong about every doubt. But I'd be lying if I said that I didn't really enjoy playing through it and seeing how the story had been translated to modern systems. It's not the game that I wanted, but it's a game that's pretty good. And that's good enough. Good night, and good luck. And good god, don't fuck Nemesis up like this. Why won't he just stay down? Yeah, no shit.